Hello, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn. I'm back with Sophie Eleanor, and we would uh, like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we're streaming from today and pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. Sophie, we are back with our fourth live stream. <laughs> Here we are. We're doing it. We're, we're doing, doing it. it. We're doing it. We did it. It's done. It's done. Uh, yeah, we're here All right. For thanks and good night. <laughs> thanks, everybody. <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. Um, it's great to have you all here. Uh, if you're watching over on YouTube, jump over to um, behance.net slash live. If you want to say hi, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and uh, yeah, so we've been playing around with this live brief. So if you missed any of the sessions, we'll do a quick recap. So it doesn't matter if you, if you missed any of the other ones. Um, we did basically working from a live brief. Um, Sophie's been following that for quite a bit um, of these GIFs that we're actually going to be using for Adobe Live. So, um, you know, synergy, I think they call it. Um, <laughs> it's also being horsepower. Yeah, <laughs> horsepower. That makes sense. Um, and uh, been playing around with After Effects um, for some of the other sessions. Um, but for this particular one, Sophie, I think you're going to be tackling a GIF in uh, Photoshop. So for those of you who see After Effects yep. and um, you know, ha have fear of After Effects. We're going to show you how to do it in Photoshop <laughs> so you can get some amazing results from Photoshop um, for your animated GIFs. Um, so, yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. Good? Me or the yeah, audience? you. Me now? You now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going great. I'm very excited for today. Um, yeah, like you said, the Photoshop animation stuff is... Uh, maybe a bit more of an easy entry point into animation because yeah as you say a lot of people will maybe look at after effects if they've never used it and just kind of go ah this is too much yeah but you know if you're already using photoshop you're probably pretty familiar with the interface um it's really not that big a leap to then go from you know editing photos or whatever to actually drawing animation so it's a it's a nice little joining of those two dots nice well beautiful mm. All right. Well, um, should we have a bit of a recap? We'll share your yeah, share your desktop. We've got the smorgasbord here. Um, this is my smorgasbord. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we won't go into this too much, but generally, like this is this area here is kind of the reference material you gave me. The brief, in a nutshell, is to create four pieces of kinetic type that are going to be used as email titles in the Adobe Live emails. And those, those four pieces of type need to say graphic design, illustration, motion, and photography. And then kind of within that, we're trying to animate each of these words in a way that represents what they are. So we want them to feel um you know motion has to have an element of motion to it photography needs to relate back to photography in some way um those are the only two we've kind of done so far mm -hmm. and maybe i'll just do a quick little recap on those actually let's start with photography so this is this was kind of the illustrated drawing we did and then we kind of landed on this little pulling focus um, concept. Yeah. I had to play around with this this morning, Flynn. And so we're going to, if it's okay with you, maybe do a little bit of live feedback here because okay. I was looking at this and going like the movement, like the concept is there, but I'm not hundred percent sure the movement itself is, um, telling the story in quite, quite the way that I want it to. Yeah. So if I jump back into after effects, and just to just to compare again so at the moment each of these letters is kind of pulling focus at a different time kind of mm -hmm. doing that dominoes sort of effect but i was thinking about it i'm like if you're looking at something through a camera lens and you do shift focus the whole thing is gonna move right in, in unison you're not gonna get like one thing one object sharpen and then you know so with that in mind I haven't changed the animation, um, like the properties or the effects that we've used here. All I've done is adjust the timing of things. And so in this version, I've got all of the letters kind of pulling focus and changing height at the same time, right. like they would in a camera lens. And then once we, once we're fully sharpened and we're in focus, then we get a bit of sparkles and like, yeah. That's the moment where you're like, 
yep, we're, we're in. And then we snap the photo, which is when we get our little flash going off. Oh, uh, cool. And yep. I've, left, I've left this kind of trail here just as a, um, you know, I could, I could sync these up again so that they blur at the same time again, but I think it's less important at the tail end of the animation and it mm. just is a, an, an extra tiny little flourish. I think there's only maybe one frame. Um, where are we? Yeah, I think there's only like one frame difference between when each of these gets fired off. But I just thought I would show this to you as an alternative mm. to the one that we did the other week. Cool. Just because I was looking at it and thinking, hmm, I don't know, maybe we can improve on this. Yeah. Is um, that something that comes up quite, to... like, quite a bit? Like you kind of like you'll, you'll sleep on it or, you know, work, go work on something else or take some time off or whatever you whatever you do between streams. Um, and, then, <laughs> and, then, and then it's like, oh, or you wake up or you're thinking about it, you know, while you're whatever, cooking or something like that. And you just think, oh, actually, maybe it should be like this. Does that happen a bit? All the time. All the time. time. <laughs> All the do, you time. Dream, do you dream in animations almost, at this point? Almost more often than not, I would yeah. say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I think is a good thing because, like, you know, you don't want to you don't want to just finish something and be like, yep, I've created the most perfect solution ever. I don't need to think about that anymore. Right. I think it's good to kind of look at your own work with a bit of a critical eye. Um, you know, there's always improvements to be made. But yeah, as I said, all I've changed with this one is the timing of things. Mm -hmm. So the overarching concept that we had from the first one is still there. So the nut of that idea is still kind of um, here. But yeah, I just thought I would show you that in case you're like, oh no, that's much better. But you, we, I mean, you can give me an answer now if you have one, but you can also like <laughs> have I like 30 it. Yeah, seconds I think it's, I, think I, mean, it. I guess uh, acting with my client, with my client hoodie on, um, yeah, I think yeah, it makes sense. Like, um, it's not something I would have thought about beforehand. Yeah. Like I thought it was, it was good and it was done. Um, but now that you kind of explained <laughs> it all, it makes, it does make more sense. And I think it's just been kind of tightened up a bit. So that's cool. Um, I, we have both versions now anyway, so yeah. that's, that's always a bonus. Nice. And the other thing that I wanted to go through with you is I also spent a bit of time this morning kind of tidying up our little motion exercise uh -huh. from Tuesday. So where we left off, I kind of hadn't finished doing all of our little sort of, um, motion lines and I was <laughs> having a little bit of trouble with um, a few of them just kind of getting them to sit in the right position and move in the right way. So mm. I've, I've actually made quite a few adjustments to this one. Um, maybe I'll just play it through and you can have a little. It hits the L, uh, the, the T slaps that I, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. All right, that looks cool. That ends really interesting with the spin and the lines on the edge. It, yeah, and, and it, ties it, it together. changes yeah. it a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. So, so the M I didn't touch. The O, really minimal changes. Is it just more the jiggle? T, Is it more jiggly? I added a bit of extra jiggle, of extra maybe ten percent more jiggle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the T. Uh, I was grappling with this because initially we had these little sort of curved like bracketed lines either yeah. side of it and I did try and animate that I, I looked at it and I looked at it and I resized them and I moved them and like it still wasn't working and the problem was when I had the trim path applied mm. it was pulling the movement down so it was drawing your eye in this direction when the T was moving in this direction Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they were they weren't kind of it didn't make sense. Yeah, they were like competing um, a little bit with each other. Yeah, yeah. And so then I looked at the these little guys coming off the M and I'm like, that's that's the that's what I need to exaggerate that movement. So I've just added some little whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> so that it's kind of pulling your eye in the correct direction. And yeah. I think that's, I feel like that's working way better. The other thing that I did 
was with our letter I. So many layers. Here's our letter I. So you'll notice um, our keyframes now have, like if we look between the first and second keyframe here of our puppet tool, um, we've now got a really long sort of gap between our first and second points mm. and the same at the end. So previously I had them all evenly spaced and it was doing a really uniform movement. Um, but I thought in the sort of vein of adding a bit of anticipation, he's going to start off slow and then like get a bit of a wiggle on and then slow back down again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think is a bit more of an interesting movement and probably makes more sense in the context of the rest of the thing. So when the, when the T kind of gives it the little kick, it's slow and then speeds up and then slows down again. Yeah. And it pops into the, pops into the O really nicely now. Like yeah. the energy, like really clearly kind of continues on. Yeah. Um, I shortened our little lines on the other side of the O, uh, sorry, the I. Mm. I also had to shorten the, the lines leading into the O. And then, yeah, so just really minor, really minor changes, but I do think that's the kind of thing that makes that's a big cool. difference when you look yeah. at it. Yeah. So I'm kind of feeling like this one's pretty much done, done yeah. now, I reckon. That's cool. Yeah. I love it. Um, now, one more thing that I wanted to show you before we jump into Photoshop, because now that we've got kind of photography and motion pretty much done, um, I want to go back to one of the first things that was mentioned in the brief, which was bright and colorful. Uh -huh. At the moment, we don't really have that. We, I mean, we've got one color and it's fine. And you mentioned that at the start, but, right? Like you want to work with, like, you don't want to be adding color at the beginning. That's something you'll add in like a bit later or whatever, right? Yeah. Like you want it to work as simply as possible, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the other thing too is uh, like, th it, this is almost my favorite part of the process is like when I, <laughs> when I am able to inject a bit of color into it and all of a sudden I'm like, yes, this is, we've got something happening now. Um, and it's nice to be able to do that once you've got the movement already sorted because it's just sort of like icing on the cake. Right. Um, so with that in mind, I've kind of just mocked up a couple of color options here. Oh, cool. And this is based off, this is based off the color palette. If we go back into our smoggers board that I sort of um, created based off the screenshots from the title animation. Mm -hmm. And so I've just kind of created this little palette here and just seeing this makes me so happy. Just <laughs> going from this, like, this is like, I love this too. Um, but I think when you add just that extra layer of color into it, mm. having those sort of um, the sparkles and the ray bursts and things in the white, it separates it out a little bit. So yeah. we're not kind of, you know, now it does really feel like sparkle instead of just the same color as our text. Yeah. Um, oh, and this is, this is a really, decide which one I like the most. <laughs> well, I have a proposition for you. Okay. <laughs> what if, um, each of the assets are exported in a range of color palettes, and then you've got a few different options to choose from yeah. whenever you like. Cause it's a really, it's a really quick and easy thing to do in after effects. Um, and, and that way you have them, nice. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Super cool. Oh, great. Let us know yeah. like which, which one tickles your fancy. I think the middle one on the left, I really like, there's something about that one. That, this guy. Yeah. Something yeah. About that. I think cause it's on a dark background and then the, the sparkles are lighter and Photography pops. But they're, yeah. They're all good. Nice. Um, I personally am a big fan of the pink and yellow combination. Uh -huh. I, it's the colors just feel like match matches made in heaven to me. <laughs> but 
you know, we could do, maybe we could do like three versions of each one. And if it were me, I would, I would be choosing this guy, this guy, and this guy, like these mm. three here kind of speak really nicely to each other. Yeah. I think, but yeah, we can, we cool. can, um, offer this decision to chat or we can just do all of them or we can, we can talk later, but I just thought I would, now's a good time to kind of have a look at that level of detail and yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Oh, very cool. Okay. Oh, one other thing. Sorry, I'm jumping all over the place here. I remembered in on Tuesday, someone brought up motion blur. Yes. Yeah. So someone was and... sort of saying like, would you add motion blur to this to make the, you know, motion feel a little bit natural? Like if you're watching a movie and you freeze frame it on a frame, there's always going to be a bit of blur going on there because if it's. Yeah. yeah. So that was the yeah. that was a comment from chat. Yeah. I remembered this morning, I was like, oh, there's actually another way to do that. Um, so we, the one we talked about on Tuesday was using this little guy here, motion blur, mm -hmm. which it didn't really look like it did much. Um, but let me just show you this guy. So this is, a, this is a little lettering piece I created a while ago, but check out the, um, that kind of like tail that follows. Yeah that sort of blurry tail, almost like a shooting star kind of a thing. Totally, yeah. Um, that is an effect that is a preset in After Effects called Echo. So I actually chucked it on, I've got the effect turned off at the moment, but let me switch it on here. You just, it's just like in the effects and presets, if you just search for Echo, like it's this little guy here, and then you just drag and drop it on. Um, but if we switch it on, um, and it gives us a few properties to play with here. The thing that is going to be the really important thing is the number of echoes. Oh, wow. So that's, that's what I've keyframed. So I've started it. I, I said up until this point, I don't want any echoes at all because the letter is not moving. Um, I want it to have a bunch of echoes as it's jumping up. Um, I think I've told it, yeah, 330 echoes. So it's repeating that shape 330 times, kind of mm. like the blend tool in um, Illustrator. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I've switched it off at this point because it's pretty hectic and getting kind of, you know, we don't, we don't need it that much. But if I play it, I might need a second to render here. But that can be like a really, um, a really effective tool for creating an exaggerated blur. Yeah. So I just thought I would quickly show you that because um, my brain completely forgot about it on Tuesday. <laughs> well, that's cool. So yeah, if anyone <laughs> anyone out there is interested in in the blur, try that one out. And yep. it's like, obviously it's like very situational, right? Like you showed an example of where you used it like to like such a great effect. Like it was that calligraphy style kind of and, mm. you know, shooting star as you, as you said, and it makes a lot of sense because yeah. it's kind of trailing this like very delicate yeah. kind of writing. It's all happening at the same time, but it's not always going to be appropriate. Right. So like learning the different, yeah. learning the different tools and like when to use them, when not to use them. Um, and of course we have like a file size limit, which I think we've mentioned in every stream is a very small yep. file size for this sort of stuff because like designing for like things to look good in an email is very like fickle. Um, and everyone's internet connection is a little bit different. So if you're going to do a GIF in an email, it actually needs to be like below one megabyte, like one megabyte is kind of max. So there are some pretty serious limitations to what we can and can't kind of play with. Yep. Um, which is why we won't be using it on this particular one. But. <laughs> yeah, as I, as I thought. <laughs> yeah, but it's there and yeah, it's a fun tool to play with as, as you say. Um, yeah, you kind of kind of need to have the most appropriate use for it because it's, it's not always the right thing to yeah. be using. Got to pick your battles. Um, and that was a question that we got from chat. So if you have any questions um, as we're going along in this stream, feel free to drop it in chat. Again, if you're watching over on YouTube, the chat that we're using today is at uh, Behance, so behance.net slash live, jump in, say hi. Um, and if you have any questions, ask away. So let's dive into some Photoshop animation now that we've done all our housekeeping <laughs> and I've caught you up on the whole, we've done the previously on Adobe Live um, 
section. <laughs> so this is a little animation I whipped up the other night um, just to kind of test this concept out because I hadn't really, I hadn't really done something exactly like this before. And I, I thought maybe I should try it before I actually apply it to this um, specific project. <laughs> so the concept being um, for the word illustration, um, we had kind of chatted about, oh, maybe there could be like pencils involved or maybe it's, you know, maybe we can have the, the letters themselves can turn into little characters or something. Mm -hmm. And while I like all of those ideas, it doesn't necessarily fit in as well with the other ones we've already done. So yeah. motion and photography are pretty much just the letters. And it's the the animation itself that's telling the story like the letters themselves are quite simplified so i was thinking how are we going to tell the story of an illustration i'm like well why don't we just show it being illustrated why don't we yeah. have it start off as a really rough pencil sketch and then we're kind of refining filling it in until we've got this um you know block flat color finished piece mm. and then we can add a few sparkles because you know, we always want to add a few sparkles. Always. <laughs> so with that in mind, um, I'd kind of done just a little rough sketch in Illustrator just to use as my reference point. Mm -hmm. um, this is the, this here is Adobe Clean and that's the, the brand typeface. So I've just beefed up the height a little to make it take up that space a little nicer mm -hmm. and then jumping into Photoshop I've got my background and I've got my reference image here that I've imported in that's nice. all I've done um now this is quite a therapeutic sort of um process or it depends how you look at it actually it can be therapeutic or it can be infuriatingly time consuming <laughs> it depends what mood you're in right <laughs> Um, I'm going to just lock my background layer and I'm going to just knock the opacity of my reference layer right back. Um, and I'm going to add a new layer on top of that. We're not going to worry about the timeline just yet. We're just going to focus on our sketching and, um, I'm going to do this, um, on the iPad with an Apple pencil using the Astro pad app. Oh, cool. Cause it's just, um, Actually, you can probably see in the screen there. It's basically just mirroring what's on um, my desktop. Mm -hmm. And I just, it's just a nicer way to draw, I feel like. Yeah. Have you tried using Sidecar at all? I think this particular um, iPad is a bit old for that. Right. But I did just get a new one. So I am pretty keen to try that out. Um, is that what you use, Flynn? I actually haven't used it, no. Like, because most of it, most, because yeah, I use PC as well, so they don't play so well together. Ah. Uh. But I just know that it com it comes up whenever anyone mentions AstroPad. We've used it before. Last time I used it was in the studio when we had Jess Rye in the studio, and I was trying to make sure that everything was set up for him because uh, it was coming from Melbourne, um, and we were connecting AstroPad up using like an iPad and everything and it works, it works great. Like it's surprisingly, surprisingly like easy to use and easy to set up. AstroPad. That um, is. yeah, I, yeah. If you, if you do have an older iPad, I can definitely recommend it. Um, I've tried Wacom's I've tried drawing with like, you know, the mouse, mm. but it, there's just, it's just like a bit of a disconnect and I feel like, um, I don't know, this just feels truer to how you would actually be drawing yeah. to me because you're, you know, it's, this is how you would draw. I've lost my vocabulary again. Drawing is how you draw. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of just working on, this is all on one single layer. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be my first frame. And I'm 
I'm being pretty loose with it. I'm kind of overshooting. You know, you can see I'm kind of going beyond where the actual reference image is. Because that's probably how I would do it in real life. Right. You know, you sort of... Like overdoing the straight lines. Scratching. Yeah. Yeah, and it's never just like one nice perfect line. I'm always like it, 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 drawing down. <laughs> like, <laughs> one day I'll have the confidence to just draw a straight line in one go and not do a thousand little chicken scratches, but <laughs> today is not that day. <laughs> Whatever works. Whatever works. Yeah. Um, when we were chatting about the like the changes. Um, to the animations before. Johanna had a question in chat. Do you often give yourself self-imposed check-in points to make changes like this within the schedule of the project? Ooh. You know, that would probably be a great thing for me to implement moving forward. <laughs> um, I certainly don't have scheduled sort of, like there's not, there's not, okay, I'm this far through the project, let's check in. Right. Um, I feel like it's just a constant back and forth, never ending um, process, which is not as efficient, I would say, as what Johanna is suggesting. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you just got to go with the flow, right? Like you could put that sort of thing in there and then, you know, put the time aside and then look back at it and go, oh no, it's fine. And then, you know, later find out, you know, you, I don't know. I always find it's when you're doing like manual labor, like I'll be doing the dishes and then I think about like all the things that I was supposed to do that day, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that doing the dishes is considered manual labor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's as close look as I get. Look at these hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my they hands, are wrinkled My from hands look water. like these, so hers can look like this. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that's like the most... Yeah, the most manual I ever have. I don't have a backyard, all right? That's all I have to play with. Um, <laughs> often, like, dropping the dishes to, like, run off and send an email that I forgot to send. Um, but people talk about that, right? Like, you know, having, like, shower thoughts, right? Like, you like those moments in time where you're not connected to a screen uh, or not talking to someone or not, like, focusing on anything and things just kind of pop into your head. Yep. Absolutely. The shower is a great place to um, have an epiphany. Yep. I also, I find just going for a nice walk is a good way to, um, like so many times I'll get stuck on a project and I'm just like, oh, why is my brain not fixing this? Like, it can't be this hard kind of thing. And, yeah. you know, I've come to learn that in times like that, I really, really just the only way out is to stop looking at it and go do something else for a minute. Because, which is not, um, not great when you're on a deadline, you know, mm. not great when you've got people waiting for feedback or whatever, but, um, yeah, it feels like counterintuitive when you're in like a hurry, right? Like, or if you've, you've got a deadline, yeah. or got lots of things to do. It's like, I'm going to go for a walk, but actually that's probably something that you the most do. productive thing <laughs> yeah. you could possibly do in that scenario. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's the same thing with sleep, isn't it? Like mm. I'm very much of a, uh, I need to stay up till 2 a.m. Cause I have to finish this. Um, right. Kind of persuasion. Fully aware also though, that if I did just get a good night's sleep, my brain would be able to accomplish much more during much the waking faster. hours. Yeah. 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 No, that's the way. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know about you guys in chat as well and um, let us know. But, um, yeah, I find I'm just a classic, like so much more efficient in the morning, like you know, eight to like 10 or 11 is where I'll get the majority of my stuff done. I'll find myself sort of sitting around yeah. trying to like critically think and be creative or like craft emails that are important or something like that. And I'm like, duh, like what's the word for this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just kind of give up. I'm, like, I'm just going to get up tomorrow and tackle. And then in the morning, I'll come in fresh and I'll just be like, oh, yeah, I was trying to say this and I meant to say this. And or I meant to, you know, we're not doing that anymore. We're going to do this. Like, seems to come come to me like straight away. Are you a like morning, like thinker for tackling projects or are you like a night owl or where are you at? 
I'm, I definitely tend more towards being a night owl. Um, there's something about, um, I don't know. I just like the quiet and the dark, <laughs> <laughs> like a creepy little like gremlin so the opposite um, of this the opposite of the live stream <laughs> this is terrible i'm <laughs> hating every minute of this no not at all um uh i think if it's something that something like this especially where it's not a difficult task but it's yeah. a really time consuming task where i don't know i just feel like in the night time i i am more likely to just sit and for a nice long stretch of time, just kind of work through something that's a bit tedious and time consuming. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't really know why that is. I don't know if it's like, I don't know if I'm in the daytime, I feel like I need to be doing other things. Mm. I don't know. Makes sense. While we were chatting about that, um, uh, as Johanna was saying, yes, this strategy of forcing ourselves to be bored so that we can solve problems is really important. Um, oh, I tell you, boredom, man, boredom is so underrated. So underrated. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I can't tell you exactly how to cultivate it, or how to like get into that mindset, but truly being bored is like the period after I've spent some time being bored is my most productive period, I reckon. Right. Um, actually, we're, we're working on Adobe Max um, this this year. And last year, I think it was last year, it might have been the year before, um, Questlove was on stage um, and he was talking about this and he was saying, <laughs> he was saying like about once a week. Just casually. Yeah. He will just like... Um, he was promoting this quite a lot to be creative. He was like, like we're always like doing things and thinking things and listening to things and talking, whatever. He's like, it's got to be mm. bored, like for like half an hour or an hour out of your week, and just I'll just sit in a room and stare at the wall um, for like okay. and, and for like an hour, maybe thirty minutes or something. Wow. Just do nothing, not thinking about anything, not trying to achieve anything, just like mental reset. Um, Interesting. It's like, all right. Okay, well, that's how you cultivate it then, I guess. You yeah, I'm like, that's what Questlove said. That's what I'm Stare doing. at a blank wall. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't lie to us. He'd probably have Why really nice to walls, us? to be fair. I'm sure he'd have a very nice house. Really interesting walls. <laughs> yeah. There's like a TV on the wall. He didn't tell yeah. you that bit. No, he didn't tell that bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm I'm on board with Questlove in this respect. He's on the money, I reckon. Nice. Um, for, the, for those <laughs> you of you can who pass are just that, please us, pass that. Please I'll pass, pass that on. on to him next time you're speaking uh, yeah, to him. Yeah, totally. <laughs> just, just send a text. Yeah. Besties. <laughs> um, if you're just joining us, so we're, we're here with Sophie Eleanor and um, doing some animation. We've been doing animations um, for a couple of weeks now, a couple of live streams, um, but this one's particularly focused on like um, I guess you would call this frame by frame animation yeah is that right yeah yeah um yeah and we've done some stuff in after effects and, and this time we're focusing on photoshop um using animating i guess creating an animated gif out of the word illustration yeah so i've kind of um kind of just done a really very sketchy sort of first pass at this I'm just going back over it in a few places just to kind of thicken it up a little because the other thing that's built into this brief is that we do want the words to be legible pretty much the whole time they're on screen. Yeah. And so this first frame here is going to be our lightest and probably least legible frame of the whole animation. Right. I'm just giving it a little bit more meat on the bones. just so we've still got a nice clear picture. And then if we zoom out a little, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty legible. Pretty I would legible. say we're not, we're not going to misread that anytime soon. Okay. So frame one is done. And now <laughs> we draw the rest of the owl. Um, <laughs> I love that. 
this is <laughs> this is yeah this is very laborious but it's not difficult at all we're just we're just drawing um so the process is basically rinse and repeat we create a new layer on top of that um i will we probably i'll probably keep my reference layer on underneath mm -hmm. and i might switch this guy off just for a minute and i might just knock my brush size up a tiny bit um and maybe for the purpose of this i'll just focus on the first couple of letters because we're not going to get through the whole word yeah today. i was trying not so. to give you a heart attack but we got about 20 minutes left <laughs> <laughs> well um maybe we'll just do i and l and then we can just, we'll um, just be ill awesome we'll just be ill <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was thinking about this going, there must be a better way. <laughs> um, because you know, you, like I always see people, um, sharing like their little procreate screen grab sort of like time um, lapse. Yeah. Time lapse. That's the yep. word I'm looking for. Thank you. Yep. Um, which is sort of what we're doing here. We're kind of doing a similar thing. I'm like, oh, maybe I should just use that. But you're pretty restricted in that workspace. Mm. Um, and it's also, um, it's also not quite what we're doing here. We're not doing a time lapse where we want to be a bit more um, particular with where we are placing our um, brushwork here. Yeah. And the beauty of doing it this way is we can be really, really, um, specific in where we put each and every line. And also we can come back and edit it after the fact, which if you're recording a time lapse and you get halfway through and you're like, oh, I should have done this back here. There's, there's no real salvaging that. Right. Sort of stuck with what you did in the first instance. I've told this story before, but you might on Adobe Live, but you might appreciate it. Um, before there was time lapse things, what we used to do is we used to like create all of our create all of our design stuff in Photoshop, and then extend the um, com like the history to like infinite, and then just okay. command then and then screen record and then command Z everything. So you just command Z oh, wow. backwards and then you'd f and then we'd flip, flip the screen recording around <laughs> the other way. So it looks like you're doing everything really, really fast. That's what we um, used to do. Wow. And how long did that take? Not that, not that long. You just create it like, no you just create it like normal. Um, and then, yeah. but yeah, you just spam the, spam the command Z and then speed it all up <laughs> and then flip it. <laughs> and then they invented boomerang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> back, in, back in my day um. <laughs> um so i'm just i'm just kind of starting a new layer each time i go a little bit thicker with the lines which when we um when we start to use our timeline tool will make a bit more sense but um, I feel like frame by frame animation, it's a pretty easy concept to understand. It's basically, basically just like a flip book, right? Like you're, you're literally right. just drawing the frames as you go. And we're going to cycle between them. So you're adding Which a bit of texture on the letters now. Yeah. Right. I'm just kind of starting to fill it in a little bit. And I'm checking the frame before it as well, just to kind of make sure that the next thing is like, we are actually making progress here. We are getting a bit heavier. And with this, cause we're talking about like file size and stuff, would a frame by frame animation like generally be smaller as an exported GIF than something 
like more complex or it's seemingly more complex created in After Effects? Um, it depends. I think in this instance it will be because um, had I done this in After Effects and imported it into Photoshop, it would have interpreted all those in-between frames as separate sort of files, I suppose. So it would have imported um, it like it, based on whatever frame rate the file is. Like it would have been like that's 24 frames exactly. a second. So it would have imported like, what, 48 um, plus yeah. more. That's is hard. Um, and it... <laughs> I'm not going to go above no. two times before live. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> um, the other thing that that would have done is... Um, even though we've only got two colors here, we've got our background and we've got white, uh, anywhere there's a bit of texture showing through, it probably would have interpreted that as sort of, a, a middle color, right. if you will. Yeah. Like it would have just added a bunch of colors that we don't have in our artwork. And so doing it this way is, um, you know, doing it within Photoshop, Photoshop's like, oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. This is, this is just two colors. I can handle this. Yeah. Um, so it's a question from Johanna. So essentially using previous layers as the onion skin. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Um, we can use the actual onion skin feature, but because I haven't, cause these are just layers at this point and we haven't sort of activated our little, um, timeline, then just sort of toggling between the layers is doing essentially Don't really the same need thing. It cause you've got your your base level there. So when yeah. does onion skinning come in handy? Like if it's like, you know, like if you're animating like a bouncing ball going along, you might want to see the previous yeah. level and do the next one, that kind of, that kind of thing. Yep. Yep. Um, exactly that kind of thing. Um, it, it would, it probably will come in handy in this particular instance too, once I get to that stage. Mm. Um, but right now, I kind of have a pretty clear idea of where I'm going. So like if you were doing a bouncing ball, it's going to be shifting position and changing shape. It's going to be squash, squashing and stretching like we kind of talked about the other day. Um, we, our base layer, our reference image is, is kind of the one point of truth that we need because we're not actually mm. changing shape or um, anything like that. So we kind of don't need it in this instance but that is a really handy tool to use. Um, the other thing that is, that I really like um, animating in Photoshop for is, um, you know, I might get to the end of this and I'm like, well, that's happening a bit fast or a bit slow. I can go and identify the specific area where it needs either more or less frames. Right. And I can add those, I can sort of slot them in where they mm. need to go. So you can be um, quite specific about it. Yeah, and Johanna has another question. So would you use Media Encoder to export this animation later or directly through Photoshop? Um, I usually just go straight through Photoshop. Straight to GIF, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. So just like export for web, um, or you can render video and it'll do a pretty good job of spitting out an um, MP4, MP4, no, M4, M4V file. Right. Um, but I do find myself often exporting natively and then re-importing into media encoder if I oh, need do. a different file format. Yeah, right. I do that a fair bit. <laughs> Just probably doubling my workload a little bit, but. Um... <laughs> okay, because I guess that in some instances, even though we're making a GIF here, like something like the client, not, not in this case, but the client might be like, oh, can I have it as a video file as well? For whatever reason, like maybe yeah. they want to embed it in a different way or format or something. Yeah, I mean, that's that's often the case. Like you, you will, more often than not, probably want to give the final file in a variety of formats. 
Um, so Media Encoder is pretty nifty in that instance. Oh, you can another... kind of see like... Go on. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, even though the clock is ticking and I'm kind of freaking out about that a little bit, I'm also just pretty chill over here, just colouring in. <laughs> <laughs> Like I've already done the hard work thinking about the concept and how it's going to sort of relay and perform in the final environment. Now I'm just coloring in and it's really nice. It's like <laughs> such a nice thing to do. Nice and chill. We've just got our chill hop like slowly yeah, playing yeah. in the background. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a great mood. Got another question. If you had to pick between After Effects and Photoshop to animate, which one wins? Uh, I mean, After Effects. That's what it's for, right? Like, yeah. Um, you could probably emulate something like this in After Effects. Like, there's sort of posterized effects that will right. take a static sort of outline and just kind of give it that stop motion treatment. So there's ways... There's ways to do similar things um, like this in After Effects. Mm. Photo Photoshop is more for if I like, okay, well, actually, let me, let me stop for a sec because I had a bunch of examples up here of Photoshop animations. I'll just let just you know as we, of... as, as we divert that we've only got, we've got less than 10 minutes left. <laughs> Ah, okay. So okay, real know. quick. Let me show you. <laughs> let me show you these quick examples. Um, this type of thing you can't really do in After Effects. Like, well, maybe you could, but it would take a million years. Whereas in Photoshop, right. this is this is maybe only four or five drawings, but it looks really complex and really detailed. Um, you can you can um, animate your path in After Effects, but you're not going to get this lovely texture and this kind of um, jittery feel, this more hand-drawn feel as yeah. easily. Um, I wouldn't even know where to begin to try and create something like this one in um, After Effects. Yeah. So you probably can do it, but it's a lot easier in Photoshop. Um, and also really transforming, you know, that. I, <laughs> There's probably some filter that you can pay 50 bucks for or something that will explode an object in right. um, After Effects. After Effects, yeah. But it's not going to give me the exact type of confetti that I like. So, you know. There's a very specific style that I use um, Photoshop for. Yeah. So now we're just going to... We're going to create our little... Um, timeline here and I'm just gonna snip each of our layers into about three frames each so I'm just kind of manually doing it there moving three frames ahead mm -hmm. um, and now we're just kind of offsetting each little guy we're doing our little digital flip book here Digital flipbook. I think. like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. This is going to happen real fast. But you can kind of see. Let me zoom in a little so we're looking at it here. How cool is that? Nice. And those two letters only took us 48 hours to do. It's so <laughs> simple, guys. <laughs> the thing with you animation, right? Prepare. Like it does take a, lot, it takes a long time to get, to get something. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Um, this is also the, the sort of, I'll get to this point in an animation and then I'll just have to sit here and watch this loop for no joke, probably 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm like, is this happening at the right time? Do I need to add a bit more here or take away something there? Mm. How's the speed of it? Does it need more frames? Um, the other thing that's really nice to do at this point um, 
and this is probably what I'll do once we kind of once we um oh, have I got my little window over here I have fooled me once before my little photoshop pop-up windows keep coming up on this screen all right yeah um <laughs> We can duplicate all that hard work we've just done and then like kind of manually boomerang it. Um, and to do that, we're just kind of reversing the order. Oh, and it doesn't have to be the same length. Like if you wanted it to kind of reverse more quickly, then you could just sort of shave a bit of time off the end of these. And so that back um, scrubber that you changed, that's like, even though you've got all that content there, that just tells it when, how long the GIF is going to be or how long the video is going to play for, right? This little guy here? That guy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so at the moment we've got <laughs> just over one second. <laughs> <laughs> um. But it's getting there, yeah. you know, like it's, it's going to work. We just need to spend a bit more time fleshing out the rest of the word. Well, time we don't have, we've actually got only a couple of minutes left, but that's, re that's really cool. So to, to kind of recap for this, you, I mean, you could do this for anything, right? Like you could do a sketch yeah. in your sketch in your notebook of, of whatever, like could be a logo, could be lettering, like Sophie's done here for us, um, bring it in and just kind of go over that template that you've created or that sketch that you've created and just getting a little bit thicker, adding thicker lines as you go along. Maybe it fills in like this one, like fully colored in at some point and then just mm. drop it down um, to the timeline down here in Photoshop and you can make yourself a quick little animation. Yeah. And I think the other really good thing about doing it. Quick in output, what? not in process. <laughs> oh. <laughs> process is like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You're only going to have two seconds of animation at the end of your month long adventure. <laughs> but um, because we've done this in Photoshop, we now have, you know, we can we can edit this in the same way you could edit any other sort of photo or illustration in Photoshop. So, you know, we can play with the colors, we can we can resize it, we can add a background image if we wanted to, like any anything that you can do in Photoshop, you can now apply to this um, animation, mm. which, which makes it quite a powerful tool in that respect, I think to, yeah. to do, um, the frame by frame in Photoshop. Yeah. But yeah, that's oh, super cool. Yeah. Well, that's going to wrap. I've just got to watch this for 15 more minutes. So <laughs> yeah. <you can> just <laughs> extend. <laughs> well, unfortunately we'll, we'll be, we'll be kicked offline before then. So, um, you will have to do that in your, in your own time. Um, I'm just going to bring bring us up big. Thank you so much. This has been great. Um, so there's actually four of these live streams. So if you want to watch the whole process, if you miss, miss some of the earlier stuff, um, you want to see how, um, you know, we kind of went through the brief that we have, like this very specific brief that we have mm. um, for this project. Um, we kind of went through that in the first session um, and spent the next two in After Effects. Um, we're animating motion and photography. So you can check those out. Lots of tips and tricks in there and um, Lots of fun banter between Sophie and I because we have a great time hanging out <laughs> together. Um, and then today, obviously, we tackle Photoshop. So it's super cool. So it's been a lot in a, um, I mean, it's a lot of live streams, but it's actually a short amount of time. So Sophie, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you for sharing everything with us. Uh, thank you for letting me because it's just, it's so much fun. And yeah, I'm really excited to to wrap these up and and give them to you so you can use them in the wild. I think and it's gonna, yeah, that's a, that's yeah. a really good point. You will see this. So um so yeah, you'll see these in our email. So we're going to have them. We'll, I'll show them on the stream as well. So we'll embed them into the stream, which is really cool. Um, so we might get some without a, with a um, transparent background and we can have them kind of displayed as we're yeah. streaming as well. So you'll see them in a future stream. You'll see the fruits of all of this labor <laughs> uh, that Sophie has done for us. Um, thank you everybody in chat. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, and Sophie, thank you. We look forward to seeing you again in the future My on Adobe pleasure. Live. Thank you. Thanks so much, Flynn. Always a pleasure. See you, everyone. Bye.